OK, it's 7.47. Let's see what's in the papers this morning with Emma Burnell and Winston Davis. Good to see you both this morning. I want to kick straight off with boiler tax. Mm. What's this all about? I didn't know there was a boiler tax. No, I didn't tax. know there was a boiler tax. Uh... Well, well, you're the expert. Why don't you fill us in on what yeah. the boiler tax right. is or is not? Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> right. So I run a heating company, and they say that they comp the government are putting a 200 quid uh, tax on all gas boilers that are sold in this uh, country in order to persuade, drive um, both uh, manufacturers and the public to want to fit heat pumps. Now, all that's done is mean that. We get charged more money for the boilers, so we then charge the public more yes, money. Yeah. So the manufacturers aren't losing out. If anything, no. they're, they're, they're winning. But the whole point is they're trying to force people to go more and more to heat pumps. But the reality of it is we're not ready for it yet. You know, there needs to be more investment in the um, infrastructure, the training of installers and engineers, and they need to make it more... I know they've increased the grant for homeowners, but... The seven and a half grand grant, but they're not talking about your window uh, double glazing, insulation of floors in in walls, um, ventilation that you're going to need once you insulate everything. You're then going to so need all ventilation. that needs to be done to make the heat yeah. pumps work to make it work better because it works yeah. at a lower temperature. Radiators work at 65 degrees, heat pumps work at 50, 55 degrees. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and there's a lot of great work being done. There's a company called Heat Geek who do a lot of great training, but they need more mm. um, grants and money from the government to try and get you know companies like us to do it. Mm. And this is a Absolutely it. So I'm fully in favour of us switching to as many different green systems as we can. But you cannot make that difference at that sharp end. You've got to make it in the investment that comes in before. You've got to have the training. You've got to be able to say mm. to somebody, this is not about changing your boiler. It's about changing your entire flat yeah. or home. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is what we're not being told at the minute. That's the problem. Which is why, presumably, whenever we talk about heat pumps... We get loads of people messaging in, some saying they're useless, my house is now cold, mm -hmm. while other people say, no, it seems to work yeah. fine. It so it's depends. not to do with the pump, it's to do with the house. It's to do with the, the house. Yeah. E even in new builds, I've got clients that call us saying, oh, my heat pump's not working, I'm cold, what do I do? And it's like, you know, even if the, the original installer doesn't know how to set up a commissioner system properly or install it properly, mm. well, they're, they're going to be naffed anyway. So we've got yeah. to train people. I mean, I, I always go back to the dash for gas that happened in the 70s, where they literally went street by street by street, changing people people over to gas central heating. And it was a great thing, but it was a government scheme that just said put loads of investment to completely change that infrastructure. Mm. And I think that's what's required here. A, a dash for insulation. Insulate every home in Britain mm. by the end of the decade. It's perfectly doable, and it would save, overall, an enormous amount of money for everybody. But, unfortunately, we just don't have the foresight or the imagination to do that kind of big programme anymore. It's all tinkering around the edges. Mm. OK, um, Emma, can we have a look at Ofsted? Yes. Uh, gosh. Um, this is a really worrying story. So, apparently, um, Ofsted inspectors since 2018 have been taking notes live on iPads and, and computers and things um, and inputting them into a system as they're talking to people. So, they get yeah. these sort of live verbatim notes. And then they're being lost and they're having to recreate them from memory. And it's this, um, again, it's, it's a computer system gone wrong. Um, it feels very, very reminiscent of things we've been talking about for the last month in terms of the post office. Yes, doesn't it? And Ofsted inspectors are being told, uh, you know, that, that what are you talking about? There's no problem. Um, a cover up in terms of the in expensive software that's been bought. Um, and then again, you know, we know that um, the Ofsted inspection regime can put enormous pressure on schools. No, so those schools have to have, at the very least, absolute confidence in the notes and, and the inspection process that's being done. Really? Why are we in this country so bad at corporate computer systems? You know, we, we understand that the computer We're very bad at the buying NHS things. are an absolute mess. And the and post office, clearly. And this is another example. I mean, I, I don't have long. I could literally go on for hours about this. But essentially what we are appalling at in this country is procurement. We have cut and cut and cut down procurement experts, people who know how to do big buying. Uh, particularly in the public sector, they're always seen as... Yeah, oh, and you will get people going, oh, why are, you, why are you employing a procurement officer? Well, it's because that company, trying to flog you something that probably doesn't work that well, has 100 lawyers writing a contract that you don't really understand. Uh, yeah, well, it was ever thus, was it? It's not right. Uh, I want to change tack very briefly. 
Um, Winston, <laughs> to have a look at the front of the star. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckle brother Paul. Yeah, What's going on? Um, so he's been on, I saw it um, earlier, so he's been on a celebrity... Um, <laughs> he's been on a celebrity programme talking about my house is haunted and right. what to do about it, because his toilet's been flushing in the middle of the night and he's hearing these cries and giggles and whatever. Um, and so he's got a ghost. haunted toilet. <laughs> yeah, 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 haunted toilet, haunted house. They're saying that they've got somebody to contact um, the, the, the spirit that's living there and it's a, a boy that was um, murdered in the 1870s. Oh. Um, so, yeah, whether you believe that or not, I mean, uh, I'm not being funny, but if I were going to come back having been murdered in the 1870s, I'd probably want to do more things than flush a Chuckle Brothers toilet. I don't know. I don't know. I'd be, <laughs> as, as much as we might laugh about it, I'd be a bit worried if I had to go in the night. It, it, do you know what? We say we laugh about it, but it depends where you come from. Right? I was in Jamaica a couple of years ago, and my family there were talking seriously about duppies over there, yeah? and talking about the spirits, and and they properly, properly believed it. And they asked me, you know, have you seen it? And I was like, no, I've not seen it. But it's, it depends. It's a cultural thing. Yes, you know? yeah. if you, I mean, if you believe, I have you believe to say, it. We were talking in the group. I'm a pure rationalist. I don't believe in ghosts at all. Um, you know. It, while you I... Swear. You'll get a visitation one of these days. I you in just will. I believe uh, Yeah, absolutely, Anne. Right. <laughs> well, there we've got to leave it. Emma Winston, thank you. See you a little bit later on. Here's Come your on. weather.